hello what a shame that I can't do this to you um, in person that I can't talk to you in person and I can't see all of your faces but what I wanted to do was to talk to you about enrichment um, and the options that are available to you in the sixth form at Samuel Whitbread. So enrichment, the whole point of enrichment is to give you the opportunity to really develop skills and knowledge and to enhance your CV when it comes to university applications, apprenticeships and job opportunities following Samuel Whitbread. It also means that there is more to life than just A-levels in the sixth form um, and it gives you the chance to give back to your community or to your school, which we believe is really important. So the options that are available at Samuel Whitbread, we believe that they are quite wide ranging and that you have the opportunity to take part in a vast array of different activities. So you can do rugby, netball, football, maths and English retake or further maths and all of those are timetabled and something that you should have considered when you put in your sixth form application. Now, I know that maths and English retake, you won't know until you get your results. So that isn't anything to worry about, but that is something that will be timetabled um, if it does apply to you. EPQ is another enrichment option that is timetabled. So it is formal enrichment. And I will go through that a little bit more in just a second. T for T stands for Teachers for Tomorrow. We have MOOCs, we have the NCS, we have Duke of Edinburgh programme, we have Subject Ambassadors and the ILP programme. And all of these are not timetabled. So these are areas where you can be really flexible um, and you decide when you want to do that enrichment and um, what day you're going to do it on as well. Now, it is really important to note that all of you will have a compulsory hour as learning partners across the academy. You, if you were here at Samuel Whitbread last year, you would have experienced that in some departments. So this is where year 12 students come into the lesson. They might help individual students. They might help the whole class. They might work with smaller groups of students. But this is your opportunity to work in a subject area that you are passionate about, that you're taking an A-level in and really help those GCSE students with their knowledge and with their learning. We see this as a compulsory hour because we think it's so important that you give back to the community of Samuel Whitbread. And so we will be expecting all of you to um, approach a department that you would like to work with and spend one hour a fortnight with them in a lesson of your choosing um, that fits in with your timetable as well. Now, we don't expect you to do that until later on in September, once you have got your timetable. But I will be in touch with more information about that nearer the time. EPQ then. So EPQ is worth half an A-level and it is formally timetabled. You have three hours a fortnight um, on it. Now, we, in terms of the entry requirements, we say that really you need an average point score of 6.7 um, or above. That we have been doing EPQ at Samuel Whitbread for over a decade now, um, and we have a lot of experience of what is required for EPQ. And that we've just found that students who don't have this average point score of 6.7 are highly likely not to finish EPQ. So they waste a lot of time in their year doing research for something that they're not actually going to finish. Um, and also, I have to say that, that tutors spend a lot of time, um, they give up a lot of time um, when it's a project that isn't likely to be finished. And secondly, that students with an APS of lower than 6.7 really, really struggle to do effectively three and a half A-levels, especially with how time consuming EPQ is. So EPQ then is either a 5,000 word essay or a product and a 1,000 word essay. By product, the example, call it an artifact. This is where you make something. But it's really important that you know that the EPQ is completely independent. So you have to choose a topic that you would like to cover. You have to come up with a title that allows itself to be analytical. Um, you have to carry out lots and lots of different research and the support that you get is via 
um, taught skills sessions where you are taught study skills, how to research, how to study, and you will have a supervisor who's there to make sure that you're staying on track and who will um, offer advice. Now, they're not allowed to give any feedback and they're not allowed to write and comment all over your work like you will have in other subjects. So that's where it can be quite tricky as well. That you are left to your own devices a lot for EPQ. So you need to be able to manage your time and you need to be able to independently study. Now, some universities make really good offers um, if you have taken EPQ or if you're on track to receive a high grade in EPQ. If you get an A star in EPQ, there are a handful of universities who give a grant. So they will pay a certain percentage of your tuition fees each year that you are at university. So EPQ can be incredibly worthwhile for some students, but it isn't for every student. And this is why we have so many options that are on the table. To give you an example then of different EPQ projects that have happened, these are just from this year's exam entries. So they were all essays. We um, only had one artifact this year and it was um, a painting. But some of the titles then are, if science fiction teleportation was real, would it be ethical? To what extent has British wrestling been influenced by its American counterpart? How important were blacksmiths in helping ancient Rome thrive and conquer? To what extent did Elizabeth I change the role and perception of women in the Tudor era? Should the US budget include funds for space exploration or should private corporations take on this role? And finally, is laughter contagious? So you can see that there's just such a wide range of um, options out there. You can literally do your EPQ on anything. But as long as it's something that you can research and most importantly, something that you know very, very little about already and that you're not going to cover in A level. It can't be that you have studied something previously or you have written a book in the past and you just want to enter that for EPQ. Unfortunately, that isn't allowed. That it has to be that whatever you do is solely aimed um, at EPQ and the purpose of it is to meet the EPQ requirements. So alternatively, some of our students decide to do Teachers for Tomorrow and this very much is aimed at students who are looking at going into education. Now, this sounds quite similar to the Learning Partners programme, but actually it is quite different and there are some quite big differences here. So this is your opportunity to really work alongside a teacher in a chosen subject to help an individual student, a small group or the whole class. You are going to work very, very closely with that teacher that you'll do two hours a fortnight um, in that lesson. You will complete a logbook of all of your achievements and they will be against some standards that teachers have to work to. This is a really fantastic opportunity to work with young people. So even if you're not thinking about education, but just work working with young people in general, then this is really good experience with you. You get to work side alongside staff in a different capacity and you get to choose the department and the staff member that you want to work with. At the end of each term, you have a 30 minute review with the teacher and then a 20 minute review with me as the head of enrichment just to see what are your strengths, what do you need to develop and how are you getting on in general. Now, we've had several students in the past who have got to the stage where they have actually taken part of lessons and um, two classes. We had one student last year who took a tutor group um, twice a week and they also decided that they were going to go into a classroom and they would take the majority of the lesson in that class. So they would be leading the lesson and the class teacher would be going around helping individual students and students that they were particularly worried about. Now that student in particular has gone on to a teacher, um, teacher training programme and we've now got teachers working at Samuel Whitbread Academy who, when they were students here, went through the Teacher for Tomorrow programme. So this is a really fantastic opportunity if education is a possibility for you in the future. MOOCs is probably our most popular enrichment option. So these stand for Massive Online Open Courses. 
if you decide to sign up to MOOCs, then I will give you a link and that link will take you to a website where there are over um, 5,000 different courses that you can choose from. There's lots of different providers that offer these courses as well. There's a whole range of courses on offer. I've had students who have fed back to me saying that they've taken um, courses on film, courses on psychology, courses on Harry Potter, courses on cookery. So there's just a whole range of different things that you can do. And this is your opportunity to really study whatever you want from a vast array. It's your opportunity as well to study something that isn't necessarily offered at Samuel Whitbread, but maybe something that you're interested in, um, particularly going forward into university or into apprenticeships. It also allows you to develop skills like independent learning, evaluation and data analysis as well. And the only commitment that we ask is that you spend about 18 hours over the year on MOOCs. So over a whole year, you just need to do about 18 hours. At the end of each term, you'll have a 20 minute review with me where we just talk through with the MOOCs that you've accessed and which ones were the best, which ones you found most enjoyable, what you've got from them. Some students have come back to me and said that actually it's helped them to determine their career path, like what they want to go into because they're so interested in a certain area. Now, the Duke of Edinburgh Gold is actually run by Mr. Edwards. And if you want to get in touch with him at all, then his email address is there on the screen. So through the Duke of Edinburgh Gold, you can achieve an award by completing this personal programme of activities in four sections. So volunteering, physical, skills and the expeditions. At gold level, you must do an additional residential section, and that involves working and staying away from home, doing a, sheer, uh, a shared activity. Now, if you um, want to do Duke of Edinburgh, or if you're already doing it and you want to carry on with it, then this would count as your enrichment option. So you wouldn't have to do anything additional to Duke of Edinburgh. However, you would need to get in touch with Mr. Edwards to let him know that you would like to do Duke of Edinburgh. And you would also need to get in touch with me in September when I ask um, and just tell me that you are doing D of E. Subject ambassadors then is slightly different to learning partners and T for T. This is really for students who don't necessarily want to go into lessons, but would like to support a department because that subject is their passion. So we ask that you provide 12 hours of support in year 9, 10 and 11 lessons, or it might be after school sessions, or it might just be working in the department. You might be assisting a class, class teacher, you might be helping students in lower year groups. You might, if you don't want to go into a classroom, you might be producing resources, creating display boards. It might be that you help at parents evenings or um, options evenings and you're talking to students about that subject area. So four to six hours of department based work over the year could be through, like I've just said, display boards, development of resources and open evenings. That 12 hours of support, like I said, I, and I really want to stress this, doesn't have to be in the classroom. It can just be in the um, department in general. So if you feel like Teachers for Tomorrow is not for you, then maybe Subject Ambassadors is going to be better instead that you're not directly supporting in the classroom, but you're helping the department in general. So the National Citizen Service, NCS, I know that quite a few of you would have signed on to the programme in year 11 and haven't been able to see it through um, because of coronavirus. There is the opportunity to engage with the NCS in year 12. So they aim to engage, unite and empower young people and really build their confidence so they can go out into society and achieve their dreams no matter where they're from or what their background is. That it provides an opportunity to explore, be inspired and discover what a student is really be passionate about. So it's a four phase programme that allows you the chance to take part in a residential course alongside a community project. 
every year, obviously apart from the year that you were year 11, we have a huge proportion of students that take NCS. And actually, it's so big that we have, if you look in our reception area, we have won awards for it because of the vast numbers of students that come from Samuel Whitbread that, that go on um, NCS and complete the programme. I know, like I said, that some of you haven't been able to complete it this summer, so there is an opportunity to do it in year 12. Chris and his team, they do come in during the year, but at the moment, we don't know, obviously, when they will be able to come in um, and if they'll be able to come in. As soon as schools open up to visitors and school is back to normal, then I'll be in touch with Chris and his team and I will set up a date for NCS to come in and visit. So... If you have already done NCS for whatever reason you did it earlier, then unfortunately you can't do it again. But if you are interested in it, then watch out for my email from September onwards, because like I said, as soon as we're allowed visitors in, then I will be inviting Chris and his team in. The individual learning plan is something that was set up by um, Professor Hubbard. And it's really to support the development of students as they move towards placements at top universities. So it's looking at kind of Russell Group universities. Students work with a specialist um, within their subject and they develop a unique individual program of study. And the key to the success of the program is really a one to one tutorial between a student and their subject tutor. Students are given tuition that's normally experienced at top universities and it really prepares students to communicate very well for those top universities and when it comes to interviews. So if you have got a relatively high average point score or if your aspiration is to go to a Russell Group University, then please let Mr Hubbard know. Mr Hubbard will be in touch with a group of you in September and there's no need to contact him this side of September. From September onwards, if this is something that you would like to do as an enrichment option, then please do get in contact with him. All of these details are in the enrichment handbook and I will send the presentation out again in September when you start at Samuel Whitbread. So if you have any questions about this presentation or anything that I've talked about at all, then all you need to do is email me. Um, my email address is r for Rebecca Jackman at bestacademies.org.uk. If you email me and I think that it we actually need a conversation about it or um, it warrants a further explanation, then I'm happy to call you for a longer chat because I'm in school every Tuesday to Friday next week. Um, and then following on from that for the rest of the term, I'm in Monday to Friday every single day. So I'm more than happy to call and have a chat. But if you do have any questions about anything, then please do um, get in touch and email me. So I hope that you agree that we have got quite a variety of enrichment options that are available at Samuel Whitbread. And I hope that you can really see the opportunities that you've got to engage with the community at Samuel Whitbread Academy um, and just develop your skills further. When it comes to picking your enrichment options in September, that's when I'll be asking for you to decide which enrichment you would like to do. So there's no rush at all to tell me which enrichment you would like to pick. There's no rush to um, get in touch with me regarding um, trying to get a place on a certain enrichment. That the only ones that you should have already applied for are the rugby, football, netball and further maths. Anything other than that, we will sort out in September and I will be in touch with further information on enrichment. But I can't stress enough, if you have any questions at all, then please just email me.